All right, so I just want to do a quickie on, well, I want to do a quickie on the touch screen that I'm using now. And just a quick, uh, just a quick example of the probe relay uh, circuit that I have going. Because I was able to finally test it out yesterday in real, real world and it worked out well. So, you know, let's, uh, let's uh, beat a dead horse and go back to that probe relay circuit. So the, the first thing I want to cover is the planar 2235, the PCT 2235 touchscreen monitor. So this thing seems to, this thing seems to be okay. It's not, it's not the, the best thing. It's not the, it's not a game changer really. Um, I mean, yeah, you got touch, uh, you got the touch functionality here. If I turn my loud ass machine on and go here, enable. If I needed to, I could home it out again. Here I've got rapid override, speed override, 100%. That may works out. Um, there is a bit of an issue with it inside of Linux proper. So if I go if I go up to here and I go to File Manager, now everybody knows what I look like. If I go to Linux CNC, double clicking is a little, a little tedious. Either it works or it doesn't. Um, I, I have to see if I can find any adjustments in Linux to uh, fix that. But inside of Inside of Linux CNC, it's it's pretty good. You know, you got you got all your functionality here. You got your jog buttons. You can jog the machine. You can see the machine will move. And that's great. Um, one problem I found with it is, I mean, you can see it's like looking in a mirror. The the, the glare factor is pretty pretty high on this thing. Um, covers for the screen are, I don't know if they're available, but I, I, if they are, I think they're expensive. So you got to kind of pick and choose where you point this thing because it's going to, it's going to shine back at you with every little piece of light that you have hanging over top. So aside from that, it seems to be good. It's plug and play. I'm running it off uh, VGA, but it also has an HDMI and a display port on the back that you can use. So you know, a little three-minute overview of this thing. It's not bad. For I got it from Staples, and Staples was only 189 bucks on Amazon. It was 100, or 201 or something like that. So I saved 11 bucks going to Staples versus going through Amazon. And that was that was right after they pissed me off with uh, not crediting me eight bucks for something that I bought the day before. And then the, uh, the price dropped on me. So I was like, well, screw them. I'm going to get the monitor somewhere else. So going back to, going back to my relay thing. Let's turn that back on. Go to my Cal show. Because of course I'm hiding the classic ladder GUI and it won't come on if I just press the button. So I have to go in and do a set B classic ladder dot zero dot hide underscore GUI false. And now the ladder pops up. Okay, so the ladder I have running off of two M codes. So I'll get out of here. Go to MDI. I'll minimize this guy here to a window. And I'll call up my HAL configuration. I'm sorry, I'll call up my ladder. I'm so used to that thing. Alright, so I call up my ladder. I've got input one or input two tied to the probe relay signal, the probe relay signal is tying into 
It's tying into classic ladder input two, and it's also tied to spindle.0.inhibit. So to control the circuit, I'm using two M codes. I'm using M144 and M145. If you watch my video on user M codes, you'll see that um, all you're doing inside of a user M code is commanding HAL commands. So inside of that HAL command, we go to Linux CNC. I did find that if I click on what I want and then just hit enter on the keyboard, it's, it works pretty well. Or I can just use the mouse. So I'm looking for my NC files, I have an M code folder, and inside of the M code folder I've got M144, M145. Inside of those, I just have HAL command, set S, probe dash relay 1, and in the other one I have probe dash relay 0. So it's just triggering the digital on and off for this setting right here and this uh, this input right here again is tied to not only the, um, the switch to divide the circuit up but it's also tied to spindle inhibit so if I command an M144 you'll see that the circuit changes I don't have the probe plugged in right now, and that's why this, that's why the circuit is complete. If I plug in the probe, and I'll do that right now with the magic of camera here. So with the pl with the probe plugged in, you'll see that the circuit is not complete. If I trigger if I trigger the probe, you'll see that it completes the circuit but also if I tried to start the spindle now it won't work because it's activating the spindle inhibit inside of that input as well so if I do an M145 you'll see that now the circuit is directed to the tool setter. If I put my finger on the tool setter and touch that, you'll see that it completes the circuit. If I try to trigger the probe, it will not complete the circuit because the input hasn't been switched from here to here. But now with the circuit the way it is, I can start the spindle up. So that pretty much, uh, that pretty much proves out my classic ladder circuit for that. So I was uh, I was pretty happy to to see to see that all coming together yesterday. I'm I'm just kind of I was in the middle of rewiring some stuff, so that's why I've got this big old mess. I can't work in uh normal conditions. Everything has to be piled on top of each other. I'm just kind of I'm I'm just uh I'm just pretty elated about it because I mean, this is my this is my order of succession here. This is how my probe circuitry started when I first got this thing. Because when I had this, it was fine. It was just tied into the one input. It worked no problem. Then I got this, and it opened up a can of worms. Because when you disconnect it, as you can see, it makes that circuit complete because it's a normally open circuit until you plug this in to make it normally closed. This, too, is normally closed. So now I'm using two inputs on the back of the G540. I'm using input two and input four. Uh, input one is my limit switch or my home switches and limit and um, input three is my uh, super pid, the uh, pulse feedback for the encoder. So these guys here, this was my original, this was my original design. Just use this switch to divide 
the probe signal for one and the other. And then in the middle, it would just, uh, it would just kind of dangle along. That lasted all of five minutes until I decided to get this enclosure instead of the one that I had originally for better airflow. And I installed this. And I was using one of the outputs from the G540 to trigger the switching of this 48 volt relay to divide the circuit, still using a single input. So if I needed to, if I needed to uh, use one of those extra imp or the, one of those four inputs on the G540 for something else, I would have to go back to the relay because that's really the only uh, uh, really the only option that I have. Um, so being that I had, you know, I was able to clear out or clear away an extra input, I chose to do it this way. And then I figured out the ladder circuitry for it. So that, uh, pretty much concludes the video. Um, thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful. Hope this, uh, tied together some of the, um, uh, some of the example that I gave you in that classic ladder tutorial and kind of brings it more into the real world for you. So thanks for watching. Uh, please be sure to like and subscribe if you enjoy the content and hope to see you soon.